Rogers and Hart's classic 1934 song, Blue Moon, isn't just the anthem for Manchester City Football Club. It also belongs to one of the best horror films of the 1980s, An American Werewolf in London. I'm Stephen Archibald, and welcome to my movie podcast. I'm certain if there were a monster roaming around England, we'd have seen it on the telly. We were attacked by a werewolf. I'm going completely crazy. The last remaining werewolf must be destroyed. It's you, David. Hiya. Welcome to my podcast. They came from within. Cult movie reviews. Hungry like the wolf. An American Wolf in London, 1981. Directed by John Landis and filmed in England and Wales, An American Wolf in London is one of my all-time favourite movies. Like many others, I've adored it since first seeing it as a youngster. I caught it on VHS around 1982. And kids, if you do not know what VHS means, ask your parents. The film's deft blend of gruesome horror and inspired black humour was a revelation to me. Even when I watch the film today, it fully retains its sense of wonder. Two American students, the mischievous David Kessler and the droll Jack Goodman, are backpacking across the Yorkshire Moors. When they stumble across the public house, the slaughtered lamb. An inhospitable reception from the locals drives the two young men back into the cold. They are attacked by a ravenous beast. Jack is killed and David is left badly mauled. Kessler awakens in a London hospital three weeks later and soon finds himself haunted by the rotting corpse of his buddy Jack, who warns David that he is now a werewolf and that he must kill himself before he takes the lives of others. Coming into this movie, John Landis had already acquired a high profile. For directing the Kentucky Fried movie in 1977, National Lampoon's Animal House in 1978, and the Blues Brothers in 1980. Landis actually wrote the first draft of this film script back in 1969. By the start of the 1980s, he was more than ready to make it. The genius of makeup effects, Rick Baker, was part of the project from the beginning. However, when he grew tired of waiting for the film to commence, he jumped ship to work on the rival werewolf movie, The Howling. But the tenacious Landis soon got him back. And the rest, as they say, is cinematic history. The movie starred a 30-year-old David Norton. Landis had spotted him in the TV advert for Dr Peppers, something which Norton heavily promoted between 1977 and 1981. As with Bruce Campbell and the Evil Dead, David Norton had burst onto the scene at the start of the 80s in a revolutionary horror film. Both actors had striking good looks. Both stood out from the crowd. And yet, despite his working steadily after An American Werewolf in London, Norton never became a great horror icon like Bruce Campbell. Well, he sort of is one, but only for this fab movie. The marvellous Griffin Dunn played David's unfortunate pal, Jack Goodman. Dunn, who was 25 years old at the time, gave an outstanding performance, playing an undead zombie-like figure 
who maintains a sharp sense of humour, despite being fully aware of the terrifying situation that he and his friend David find themselves in. Dunn went on to become an excellent lead in Martin Scorsese's After Hours in 1985. He has also appeared in such illustrious films as Quiz Show in 1994 and The Dallas Buyers Club in 2013. With such a cast and crew, there undoubtedly must have been plenty of laughs on Landis's set. Even so, there was a downside for Griffin. He was left feeling depressed when he first saw himself made up as a mutilated member of the undead. Dunn said, I look like I'd been killed just a few minutes earlier and it was really upsetting. His poor mother wasn't very well in this period and he worried she'd be badly affected by his screen appearance. Unfortunately, she was. Someone there. Good lord. Can I have a piece of toast? The dreamy British actress, Jenny Agatha, by this stage, well known for her roles in The Railway Children, Walkabout, and Logan's Run, portrayed the thoughtful Alex Price, the nurse who becomes romantically involved with the sweet and vulnerable David. Their love story is beautifully played and it helps us to fully invest in the movie's tragic outcome. Jenny supplied a humorous anecdote about the much talked about shower scene. She quipped that when it was being filmed, there seemed to be twice as many technicians hanging around on the set that day. An American werewolf in London is as renowned for its music as it is for its inventive horror set pieces and sly humour. Apart from Elmer Bernstein's atmospheric score, it also jokes around with popular songs, which either have a werewolf or a moon theme. We get to hear three different renditions of Blue Moon by Bobby Vinton by Sam Cooke and by the Marcells. There's also Van Morrison's Moon Dance and Credence Clearwater Revival's Bad Moon Rising on the soundtrack. But I'm with all those, including Norton and Dunn, who are flabbergasted by the absence of a particular pop song. Warren Zevon's 1978 hit, Werewolves of London. I'm really quite fond of the movie's opening scene, the spooky atmosphere of the moors, and the odd behaviour of the pub regulars, among which are the talented actors Brian Glover and David Schofield. Plus, there's an appearance by the dearly missed comedian Rick Mail. David Lynch's The Elephant Man from 1980 had remarkable makeup effects created by Christopher Tucker, a movie in which John Hurt beautifully portrayed the heavily deformed John Merrick. Quite rightly, many in the industry were aggrieved that there was no awards category for best makeup. This was duly corrected, and Rick Baker ended up being the first recipient of the award at the Oscars for 1981. He also picked up a Saturn Award for his efforts. Baker went on to win six more Oscars, his most recent being for The Wolfman from 2010. It just had to be another werewolf movie. I love the fact that Baker based his werewolf designs on his pet dog Bosco, who was a quiche hound. John Landis shot this movie 
in chronological order, which gave Baker the time to complete the complex makeup and practical effects. And it's said that it was Rick Baker himself who played the Nazi mutant, who cuts David's throat in that notorious dream sequence. And let's not forget that Michael Jackson adored this film so much, he got John and Rick to work on the brilliant pop promo stroke mini movie Thriller in 1983. An American werewolf in London was shot between the 2nd of February and the 3rd of March 1981. Interior filming was done at Twickenham Film Studios in Richmond upon Thames. This glorious film was released in the States on the 21st of August 1981 and in the UK on the 12th of November that same year making $62 million from a budget of $5.8 million. I think it's rather cool that David Norton kept his red puffer jacket as a souvenir and that Griffin Dunn did the same with his green one. I'm Stephen Archibald and thanks so much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Please feel free to like follow or subscribe. All of my episodes are available through most podcast hosts. Stay well, beware of the moon, and bye-bye for now. I'm sorry I'm upsetting you, David, but you don't understand what's going on. I understand, all right. You're one of the undead, and I'm a werewolf. Yes, that's right. David, go! I'm going to the police! Jack was right! Jack is dead! Uh, Jack is dead and six people are dead! There's gonna be a full moon tonight! I'm going to the cops! Oh, be serious, would you? You can't let them go. Should the world know our business? It's murder then. Then murder it is.